only one tune. Yeah. I did get a saxophone though in band, but I, I knew how to play every all the songs off the radio. Didn't know how to read a damn note at the end of the year. <laughs> White Hole tried to flunk me. <laughs> but she fucked up, I made a 70. And she made she had me like a 68. And uh, I did the little math on it. My mama did the math and took that shit back up there and said, y'all. So I, 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 I got out of band. My mama said, you take that shit, that uh, $500 horn back to the mugs. So I, <laughs> but I knew how to play it all. We couldn't read a damn note. But then again, that's spiritual also, you know. Uh, um, Nothing. Uh, what we're going to deal with today is, so we won't miss it, we are, we are dealing with the underground deities. The underground deities are the deities of the ancient Egyptian mystery system, which is called Osiris is the god of the underworld. Your Yoruba deities are underworld deities. Um, uh, your Vodun deities are underworld deities. And basically the African deities are underworld deities. Underworld deities are higher than what you call the heavenly deities. The heavenly deities are a substitution for just mining things for a little while, but they are our children. So we'll get into that science today, and, and, and the more and more we understand this, the more and more we take on our own godhood that the kingdom that is coming and the kingdom that the white man fears is us. Is us, and as a matter of fact, the, the X Files movie actually explained that type of information also too. So I'm gonna um, I found this little book here. You might get a hold of this. Devils and Demons, the complete book of Devils and Demons. I stole this from um, Tower Records. Y'all don't do that because you you don't have that energy to do that shit. You fuck around and <laughs> shoot. Complete book of Devils and Demons uh, by Leonard. R. N. Ashley. Um, now, also too, uh, um, this is uh, Barnes and Nobles. Bo what, what Barnes and Nobles started doing? They got a section. They got a bargain book section, and they have started taking these old out of print books and print, reprinting them and putting their name on them. So therefore, there's a section at Barnes and Nobles on Peach Street when you first walk in the door, the first couple of hours. There's a bargain book section. They got a metaphysical section up in there too. So we're saying you get good hardback books for like six dollars, five dollars uh, at Barnes and Nobles. They, what they did is they they literally started reprinting all these old books. Here's one from the 19, I think it's from the 1940s, Fallen Angels, 1952, Soldiers of Satan's Realm by Bernard Bernard J. Bamberger. Um, so this is one um, I, I got from Barnes and Nobles. Um, I don't think it's in print, so I, I'm just saying access this store for the for the print in print books because Barnes and Nobles, if you notice, the stuff is kind of in your like light style shit. They're not gonna really order no real deal metaphysical stuff up in there because they don't want to get sued if some white boy go out there and cut up some you know cut up his little brother and shit and run over his head with the damn lawnmower and shit and then attribute it to a fucking book he read. You see, so basically, um, but they got, but, but the, 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 I'm just saying this based on a lot of the out of print books are coming there, um, uh, are coming there and you can get them in hardback, so, but, but other than that, um, other than that, you can order most of your stuff through AWO, um, as far as the heavy metaphysical things also too, so, uh, we want to deal with that, but the reason why I want to do that, because it has a good list, they got a good list of these so-called are uh, fallen angels, and we are the fallen angels, number one, so shit. The people in here is only your own energy if you try to understand it. Some brother called on the radio and said, man, you, you saying some stuff, man, you must be one of them fallen angels. I said, you damn right. That's what I was saying on the fucking show. That just went right past his head. We are the fallen angels. That's why in the movie Fallen, Denzel Washington ended up becoming Azazel. Azazel is nothing but the god Tahuti. You see what I'm saying? Uh, the, the, the God Tehuti, which later on becomes John and Elijah in the Bible. So it just depends on where you're from. So Azazel, so that's the reason why he ended up being Azazel. You're looking at shit as evil, but the reason why they're doing that is all because of the simple fact that they're trying to get it in your mind not to rise. So another form of Azazel was also spawned, basically. It was supposed to lead the Hell's Army. You see what I'm saying? Or Azazel was probably the little trickster 
clown, which was a form of, which was a form, the little clown you saw in, in Spawn, that was a form of a leg bar. You see what I'm saying? The trickster. The little fat, the, the little clown was a form of, of leg bar in the, in the Spawn movie, which is out on video you need to access. What's that, sister? Yeah, he's a form of Heru. Which which book is that? Um, um, Hebrew myth. White goddess. White goddess. White goddess. White goddess. Which is an excellent book. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, also, Robert Graves has a book called King Jesus, which is a mystical meta. It's a, it's, it's actually the mythology of Jesus. It was a mythology. The, the, the whole Jesus thing was a Christian mythology before they turned it into a religion. Just like the Hebrew thing was a, a, a mythology. So there's a he, he also has one called Hebrew myths. So he has Greek myths, King Jesus, Hebrew myths, white goddess, um, um, white goddess. And he also has one uh, called Jason and the Argonauts, the golden, the golden fleece, which is out of print, very hard to get. Um, very hard to get. But King Jesus is in print. Hebrew myths is probably going to be hard to get. But before this thing became a, before this thing became a, uh, uh, a mythology, uh, a religion, it was an advanced mythology. So, that's some stuff you also need to access. <coughs> but I happened to find this, and I said, oh, shit, I had to have it. The God, the devils and the demons, uh, complete book of devils and demons. <coughs> so now, um, okay. And to let you know that this is not being mean-spirited, we've had problems all over the country where babies is crying and somebody in down Milwaukee watch, watching the tape and they're trying to hear some science. You see what I'm saying? So basically, that's the reason why you make this tape and all, but this t type of information is not only my information, it's the people's information, basically. I'm just a tool to deliver the people the information as far as going and synthesizing these particular books to make this shit plain. You see what I'm saying? Now, also, if you can, um, we got to get a hand. I'll tell you what we're going to do. Um, because the, I, I don't think none of the stores are going to actually take this thing. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to get to, um, try to get, a, get in touch with Santee Press. I think that's the name of it. Because they got four volumes of the, the Legends of Israel. Which, let's say, if the Bible gives you, if the Bible might give you two or three paragraphs of a story, what you didn't realize is that they got a whole damn chapter of the story that the Bible might give you two or three paragraphs of in the Old Testament. There would be a whole chapter, two or three chapters of that story. So if you're getting a damn paragraph or so, you understand what I'm saying? Just like, the, like, like well, let's see, let's see, Exodus. Exodus will give you what, about three or four chapters of Exodus, maybe, you know, split in half, all carved up. Whereas Exodus in the Hebrew mythology is damn near one book, big as the Bible. They got a whole book on Moses as big as the Bible in the Hebrew mythology, but the Bible might give you one, um, three or four pages. So obviously the reason why we can't really understand anything based on that is because we're not getting the whole story. We're getting deleted, the, 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 the deleted types of, um, we're getting deleted types of um, information. You see what I'm saying? Um, so, so uh, also, um, um, there's whole stories of Solomon and whole stories, take for instance, when, I had, when they went to go read the whole satanic thing, if you read the complete stories, especially in the book of Enoch, the book of Enoch, but if you get all of the myths put together, like in this Hebrew mythology, you're going to find out that there was a other group of gods that had their side of the story too. But we're just getting the one side of the actual story. You see what I'm saying? So therefore, um, we gotta get, we gotta access that particular book. The, it's called the Legends of Israel. The uh, uh, the Le Legends in it of Israel, um, and it's put out by uh, Santee Press. So what it is is the problem is, is the reason why we can't get anywhere because we're getting half stories. That's why the new motto of chaos magic is of chaos magic is nothing is true, all is permitted. That's the theory of relativity. 
You see what I'm saying? Just depends on what angle you're coming from, it can be a doggone pr truth. In the Zohar, which is the written Kabbalah, it says that a man can spend a whole lifetime trying to learn a quilt. And he can learn, he can study every patch on the quilt, and that's called theology. But he don't realize that the quilt is just a lay in. If you pull back the quilt, you got a whole bed up under there. You see what I'm saying? So, uh, a whole bed. So, um, this is the reason why we say that, um, and it's interesting here, it's interesting here. Because um, I've, been, I've been getting this since I've been lecturing. People saying, you know, well, I don't like to read um, all them books and all them books, talking shit about all them books. But it's interesting that the Azazel story, the reason why Azazel, and I'll go into the, the reason why Azazel was cast down because he taught the man the art of reading. So if that shit was a privilege and an art, you understand what I'm saying? Then that means that you need to be doing a lot more. You see what I'm saying? But see, the cracker done produced a lot of entertainment. That's what your novels and all that bullshit. If a novel is not some esoteric science, you see what I'm saying? You don't need to be messing with it. You see, at this particular time, because we got too much information to get through. You see, uh, too much information to get through. And, um, um, and I want to, yeah, I, I'll tell you this particular story. Um, what happens, I, I've noticed this about white people. And it's, it has nothing to do with the so-called underclass. I'm talking about the upward mobile. When black people are upward mobile or the bourgeoisie, when they get around white people because we patronize fucking white people. You ever, you ever see a crowd with four or five white people walking and they have one nigga in the crowd and be the only motherfucker smiling? Just a grinning and laughing. Be the only motherfucker smiling and laughing. You see what I'm saying? But we patronize them so much until basically we don't really get into anything intellectual with them other than, I'm not talking about the job shit. That ain't nothing. We're talking about, they want, they, they want to know your thoughts. You see what I'm saying? On an advanced level. And what's happening is, we be patronizing and we all just be talking all this old dumb shit so they think that we're stupid. You see, so what happened was, is um, me, my girl, there was a, a, a vegetarian restaurant down the street. I'm in protest from that now, but I said, oh hell, I remember the good old days. So I went down the street. I went down the street. There was a vegetarian restaurant down someplace, um, 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 down near um, um, uh, uh, two streets over from Peace Street. So we went down there to eat one, son one, one Monday. So she was working. She went by the job to get a check. There was a white boy that worked with her named Josh. He's all, you know, one of these crackers. Well, he was from T Kentucky, but he moved to California, Berkeley, you know. They're still into that hippie and sunshine shit. So he a vegetarian and, you know, a great liberal and all this kind of thing. He, he gave away his fucking car, you know, because it's so, you know, confining and all this shit. So he said, can I go down there with you? So we said, okay, cool, you know, fuck it. So we went down and stuff and talking and stuff, because I, you know, and, and so we went down and was talking with the white boy, sitting there eating, and I'm saying the whole time now, I, 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 the reason why I invited you to come down is because I'm going to see what's happening with you. We're sitting there eating, and he's basically talking about the damn job. Because they know with black people, you can talk about the job and stuff, but you can't get into nothing very advanced with them because they think we stupid. So he said, well, what do you do? I said, well, I do lectures and stuff, you know. I didn't say I do lectures on the white man is the devil. <laughs> I said, I do lectures, you know, on African history, Egypt, and shit like that, you know, just to, you know, just to get him out. He was like, oh, oh, and so he kept on talking about the job and all these old fucking shit. On a menial level, I said, now sooner or later, I'm going to start preaching up in here because, because damn if I'm going to sit up around a motherfucking cracker and he you know, uh, 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 insult my intelligence by talking some damn menial uh, uh, small talk. So the first thing he did, he, he, he went in, so he tried to drop a little knowledge. He said, yeah, you know, they, the Egyptians had brain surgery and all this kind of thing here and all, you know, and said a little thing, and that was my introduction. <laughs> so, okay, that's the introduction. I said, okay. And I started rallying it off to him. So the whole time, I'm doing it in a, in a nice way. I kept saying the West, instead of saying the white man, I said, well, you know, the Western man is really quite dumb. The Jeffro Bodine of, of, of the world. So I was throwing this shit all off on him, but I wanted him to know that I was no damn fool. And see, the, uh, the, we, we as so-called so upward mobile, even when you get around them, they're saying this is the best of their race, but they're real stupid. Or well, you can wear a suit and tie, and you can talk about damn electronics, and you can talk about all the little shit your little job does. And whatever little old thing you're doing, you know what I'm saying, with, 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 with AT&T, IBM, or whatever, but that's not the real deal shit. Now, I knew this cracker went to Berkeley. 
Now, Berkeley got one of the biggest libraries on the fucking West Coast. See what I'm saying? It's dealing with all kind of metaphysical things, all kind of new age things. So I said, I know this cracker. If he's a vegetarian, I know this cracker knows some shit. And I'm not going to let him get out of here without discussing this shit because he ain't going to small talk me. So when he, when he opened up the door, I went into some things. So he figured, I'm going to try to find out what this nigga know. So I said, no, I'm, I'm not just going to talk about the basic shit. I'm going to get into some deep shit and try to corner myself so I know you'll ask me to explain it, thinking I wouldn't know how to explain this shit. So I went straight into some magic shit. I went straight into some stuff about the ritual, and you get a coconut, and you get an egg, and you get this, and you know, you get some chicken blood, and all that kind of shit. So he said, oh yeah? Cause, but he's still thinking scientific because they damn left brain. What's that, no, what's that, left brain? He said, oh yeah? As if to say that the Africans, and I said, first of all, the Western man think that the ancient man is stupid. That's the first thing that they think, that the ancient man is stupid. So I said, what I'm going to do is, um, the, the first thing, when, when I said this, I said, you know, he said, yeah, yeah. I said, now don't you think that the, when you see them primitive people, you kind of think of them as being stupid. Even the little old Mexican or even the little old rainforest, you think, oh, they are spiritual, but you don't think of them as the intellectual type of people. And he said, yeah, the Western man does, you know, does think that way, as in the thinking. I said, yeah, okay. And I, I knew, and I said, that's the problem is you're looking at ancient times with modern eyes. So the first thing I said was when I went into the chicken blood and all this kind of shit, he started, he had me say, you explain that to me. How does that work on a scientific level? You see. I said, oh, yeah, I, I wanted you to go there, motherfucker. I wanted you to go there. I said, okay. I said, first of all, do you know anything about electromagnetic force fields? <laughs> he said, yeah, yeah, electromagnetism and force fields. I said, so everything in the universe has electromagnetic force field. I said, so when a person was sick or a person had something wrong with them, our doctors were more advanced than the Western man. He understood that he didn't have to doggone cut nobody open. That was the last resort. He understood that everything inside of the body had its counterpart in nature outside of the body. And only thing he had to do was polarize the electromagnetic force field to fit that within the body. You see? So he'd take a chicken and all and polarize the electromagnetic force field from the chicken to fit that within the body. And he can manipulate the structure based on the electromagnetic force field. And he can heal the person by manipulating the flesh and the physical. Motherfucker say. <laughs> Yeah, 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 and then there's a little hatred start coming because then they because then he was feeling like he was feeling he was feeling like a damn fool. I said, no, motherfucker, I'm an expert at this goddamn shit. This is not no little conversation, motherfucker. This is what I do for a damn living. So then he started feeling a little inferior. You know, a white motherfucker don't want a nigga to know more than him. So I went into some crawling and some other shit with him, and he was like, oh, you know about all of that type of stuff. And I started going into it. Then, so he got real quiet, started walking real fast after we got up trying to get back to the damn job. I said, yeah, I got this motherfucking ass. And sure enough, the next day, see, what he did was, instead of trying to, instead of bearing witness to it, what he did was, because he felt so inadequate, then all of a sudden he tried to level he tried to level my information by saying to my, my girl, oh yeah, man, y'all see, he's still into that voodoo stuff. You so he's still into that, you know, that kookery or that, you know, trying to level this shit because he didn't want to bear witness so the motherfucker knows some shit more than him. And I said, you know, I'm not going to get around these crackers no more and patronize them because too many black people get around them and you don't talk about shit. And these motherfuckers say, yeah, them niggas are stupid. And I'm not talking about the people out in the street. I'm talking about the doggone, I'm talking about the doggone intellectual or the so-called black upper mobile. I ain't talking about shit. And these crackers saying, this motherfucker think he knows some shit. Hell, we killing this monkey ass right now. This nigga don't even know grinning up in our face. So I don't let, I, didn't, I don't let them crackers off the hook like that. Uh, and, and, and so what I want to do is, this book has a, a, a list of deities a list of deities I'm going to turn to, an underworld, uh, underworld de deities, and we're going to pull libations to that. 
Uh, let's see where they're going to go to. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to pull libations to, um, to that. Uh, we're going to dedicate this lecture also to Pascal Beverly Randolph, which I said on the radio last night, which was in actuality a father of metaphysics who traveled with Abraham Lincoln and taught Blavatsky and taught a lot of white people what they know, especially in American metaphysics. And then the brother, I think the brother, was well, something happened, either the brother killed himself or the brother got killed. But anyway, they came in and ramshacked his papers and got all his information, and that became the basis of American occultism based on Pascal Beverly Randolph. So he was mentioned in the book, The Mask of the Illuminati. A couple other books mentioned P.B. Randolph, and he has his book out for years, Sex Magic. But Sonny University of New York, State University of New York, printed a 400-page volume on P.B. Randolph. And so, uh, so this is one that you need to access and get in your library as far as the history of this particular information. Because this brother was a divine brother. As a matter of fact, let me read something. Let's see if I can find this. If it's, it's in the, this, there's a passage in the Mask of the Illuminati, which is by Robert Aaron Tom Wilson, which is an excellent book, which probably is a better book on the Illuminati and what they're really into other than ignorant ass. Uh, Bill Campbell, Bill, excuse me, Bill Cooper, motherfucker which didn't know. He was from the outside in. Um, I'm looking in. Um, this is a prolific scholar, Robert Anton Wilson, which wrote this is borderline fiction and fact combined in a book to give a sequence of what's really going on. So this is probably one of the best books on it to get into the actual um, science of what's actually going on with the Golden Dawn Society, a spinoff of um, also uh, the, uh, a spinoff of the uh, Illuminati. Now in here it talks about um, the Illuminati, as needless to say, has, uh, uh, has motives of their own. There is, there is no God but man. They were right about that. And was their um, slogan before it was Crawley. In fact, the Auto Templi Orients, which is Crawley's OTA organization, in modern form was created by uh, amalgamating Leopard Ingalls revived Illuminati in, eight, uh, um, um, in 1888. So, Whatever it was, there was a group, there was a Knights Templar group. And it, th this order had been defunct. And P.B. Randolph, a brother from America, revived one of the great cult organizations today, Crawley's OTO. So it says in 1888, with P um, Pascal Beverly Randolph, or P.B. Randolph, Hermetic Brotherhood of Light, Randolph, an American Negro, had started as a voodoo priest or a Vodun priest who had received his advanced training from some um, 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 dervish order behind Rasputin Young Turks. So he was hooked up by uh, supposedly the Young Turks. And now the Young Turks, as you know, was Rasputin, which was the guy over the Tsar, you know, was their musician um, over the last uh, uh, nobility in, in Russia. Um, Rasputin, if you ever get any stuff on him, or either read, just go and you can, every, you, that's, Show shit on him on TV and all, you know, we ain't got time to be reading that kind of history and shit. But anyway, um, anyway, uh, he started this OTO, which is Crawley's organization, Pascal Beverly Randolph. So this is a serious brother, you see what I'm saying? And he probably was an advanced spirit, um, an advanced spirit and all, you see what I'm saying? So this is a brother that we, um, this is a brother that uh, um, 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 we need to access. And, we, and, and before then, it was, and I was turned on by him in 1991 from a brother, from a black guy in, uh, uh, over at Avalon Bookstore. And he told me about the information. Now, it's interesting because at that particular time, he said, I'm trying to get all the works of, of Pascal Beverly Randolph, or I'm trying to get all the information on P.B. Randolph. But he couldn't get anything hardly but the little book Sex Magic that was out and a few other works. Now, lo and behold, in 1997, the end of 97, uh, a sunny um, State University of New York, Sunny's uh, Press, put out this 400-page volume on this brother's life, so we need to access that and all, because this is the kind of uh, people also, like Martin Luther King or either W.E.B. Du Bois, we need to be telling people about these type of historical characters, just like doing the work of the first five presidents, because this all links into the shit. What the Moors were saying about, you know, the first five presidents was black, on the back of the $2 bill, you got the, the President Hanson, I think, which is, I think Hanson was he the last president? 
black president, he's on the $2 bill. Well, this Pascal Beverly Randolph links right in with that shit that over here, how could this brother be an American Negro and, did, and, 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 and actually um, um, tapped into this particular information if there weren't brothers over here in the West from the get-go that he was the order of? So this bears witness with what the Empress was saying, what the Moors were saying all along. You see what I'm saying? Now, it's interesting because we know the book, um, I'm going to put the libations, but when you're on the road, you're on the road. When the, uh, the book, The America's Secret Destiny, and here's a book called The Return of the Wisdom of the Serpent. Um, uh, uh, did you get this? Because there's only a few people. I, because it was, it, I, I saw it in October. I saw it. I saw it in October, and I didn't get it in Philly. So um, I, found, I saw one at Tower Records and all, so I lifted it. There's only one copy, so I said, shit, this motherfucker coming out with me. But y'all don't do that now, because you don't know what the hell you're doing now. So we fuck around stealing, and the energy and the force don't be with you. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, and, 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 and so I got it, and, and C. Freeman L. got a copy, so I know it's three copies. So I'm saying we got to get a hold of this book because in the back of this is also he bears witness that America was set up as a secret destiny to bring on basically the Christ energy. So it was set up by the Moors and given to the white man with the whole constitutional shit. You see, and also America's secret destiny deals with that too. Um, uh, there's two books on the, uh, uh, America's secret destiny, one by Manly P. Hall and one by another one. But anyway, it, it bears witness that the Moors set this thing up based on the Christ energy as well as the doggone, your, your boys... The Hopi Indians say the same thing, that the Christ energy is going to rise up over here. In their last book, they bear witness to that in the book, the Hopi Survival Kit. Hopi Survival Kit. Because the information we get on the Hopi Indians, which is probably the most advanced of the Native Americans that was lived, that, that survived, that kept all the secrets. They even worshipped the Blue Star Kachina, which is the star Sirius. But in the, um, 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 uh, their book, the first book that they had on the book of the Hopi, is a book, they only, get, they only released a few documents in 1973. And the whole book came from those few documents. But the complete volumes of that was not released until last summer. The Hopi Survival Kit is the name of the book. So that's one that you need to access to get that, to try to understand that the Native American side and the Hopi, which is the last surviving esoteric Native Americans that we know of, on the level that, 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 that also when you look at their structure, their paintings, their houses and everything, it, 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 exembles, it excuse me, resembles the Dogon almost identically. You see what I'm saying? Huh? Yeah, the secret is the little book, the little yellow book. Yeah, it, is it still in print? The Brother Phillips book, The Secret of the Andes. It's not in print. It was an awesome little book. Yeah, you know, uh, awesome little book. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, by now, okay. Yeah, Secret of Andes, they talk, you know, but, um, uh, so he also bears witness to this. He also bears witness in this book, and this one you're going to get, Afrikiti, this Return of the Serpent of Wisdom. I'll give you the, the name of the person by Mark uh, Amaru Pinkham. That's A-M-R-U. That's Amaru Pinkham, P-I-N-K-H-A-M. Mark Amaru Pinkham is the name of the book. Uh, uh, return of the serpent of wisdom, the serpents of wisdom. And in there they got a whole section on the Jedi of ancient Kemet. The Jedi. So bad witness that the, the Jed pillar of the Jedi warrior of what you call it. There's a whole chapter on the Jedi, which is the serpent people of ancient Kemet up in here. Uh, ancient Kemet. There's a whole section on Atlantis, Lemuria, Kim. So it's an excellent book own the wisdom of the serpent around the, uh, uh, around the world. You, you, you still have any copies of that Mark Balfour's book, uh, Sign of the Serpent, or did you sell out? Yeah. You sold out of that? Yeah. I don't, I don't know if you can get that again, can you? Yeah. Purple. They still, they still, in, I thought, yeah, the, that's a scientific one, but this one gives you all of the ancient history of that. So this is one we also um, um, want to access also. Also, um, you've heard me the last time talk about Titan and Satan and Typhon and Titans. Anyway, one of Gerald Massey's, which is the greatest Egyptologist, Gerald Massey had a source. You know, there's some, everybody got their sources. So Gerald Massey had source people, like a guy named Renolf. They wrote these books of the dead that we can't get now. They got some up in the University of Michigan, which is some bad stuff. But one of Gerald Massey's sources that he referred to is a guy by the name of Reverend Alexander Hislap. 
And the name of this book is The Two Babylons, put out by um, um, A and B Publishing, which is the black classic type press. You know, uh, A and B is called The Two Babylons of uh, Papyrus Worship and, Nip and, um, and the Worship of Nimrod and His Wife. Also, it's the mark of the B666 reveal, which also Nimrod basically is, Reve is, is Orion. With all this story about Nimrod being an evil person, that's actually, that's actually Orion. Now, first of all, um, 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 you, know, you know the rule if you got some sisters sitting up or whatever the deal is. Y'all brothers know somebody got to unass something to let the sister sit down. You know, yeah, okay. Yeah, you know, so um, if the sisters want to have a seat, that's the least we can do for the black woman and shit, you know, is do that. I mean, you know, we don't do much. <laughs> we give a motherfucker the seat, you know. You know, run out on the kids, you know what I'm saying? Whoop her ass, call a bitch hole, so at least you let a motherfucker sit down. She feel like a queen for a date. So that's just the basic Afrocentric rule that the sisters sit down. Not unless they want to, you know, do whatever else. But it don't mean no, it don't, you know, it, it just don't look right. Even on the damn camera for a sister be sitting in a motherfucking bunch of niggas be sitting down chilling, you know, you know. If this was a woman speaking, you might have a little, you know, and stuff, but then again, you ain't shaped right for me to damn drool over, so therefore I have to give it to the sister. So also uh, the two Babylons is, 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 is a book dealing with this particular information being the Titans. We're going to get back into that too. Now this is a major lecture, but if people don't know, we're going to be here for a while. You know, we we be here for the while and all. So let's get the show on the road and um, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's get the show. Now, okay, is this go with this the bucket I'm pouring it in. I'm gonna pour it in a. You got two of these buckets, right? Okay, yeah, these are nice buckets. Now this is an excellent bucket for people for libations. This is an excellent bucket you need to buy from where Kmart, Walmart, Family Dollar. This is, we have, this, this, is, this is our main libation bucket that we've had for years and it's just not starting to crack and shit, you know, but um, this is an excellent bucket for libations and stuff for the people that's into the serious libation thing, um, um, li libation thing. Also now, um, let me get a few things out of the way also too. Um, uh, um, brother out of England, what's the boy? Um, Kenneth Grant, yeah, out of England, but anyway, I, I produced his, uh, the site, uh, this is the disciples of the, the polarity of the awakened surface. So this is 10 ways to raise the kundalini. We got some of these for sale for a dollar for the people that's interested in those. We also have, uh, we produced this document that I've always been showing. I said to produce this document, been showing since 94, of the sister with the dreadlocks and the demon coming out, which at the time nobody could understand. But since we went through all this demonology stuff, you don't understand, that's a form of melanin. And we'll go back into that too also too. So we got this particular historical piece, which is a talisman also too that brings energy to your house. Uh, yeah, here's the one. Uh, get this to Sister, uh, Af sister uh, Awo, e Awo. I want to get this right here. Yawo. But um, we also have a year of a tree of life. That's the one I was telling you about that has the deities already lined up. Also, so the people that are interested in the year of a tree of life, we got some of those. If the people that never received the Christ ritual, it was the, the brother that, that, that bought this, came to the lecture, and bought this and had to go to court, and he didn't have nothing to, to put magic on them crackers at court, and he was in the wrong, he said. He did this, and he recited this Christ ritual. Burned a candle to recite the Christ ritual in the, in, in the white woman that was the plaintiff ended up, they, they damn near throwed her in jail. <laughs> so some shit the brother did. We can talk about reversing the polarities. So we got the Christ ritual. We have this document, which is very special, um, of the sister with the, with, with, with the dreadlocks coming from England. And we have the ten ways to raise the kundalini also too, as well as some tree of life that we're going to get into. Um, still, we, we're selling the, the uh, heretic papyrus of the British Museum that says the white man is the devil coming 5,000 year old papyrus from, the, um, from, from Egypt, so we have some of those. Um, um, we have some of those. Uh, and a couple other things, so if you're interested in these, when we go on this 30 minute break in a few minutes, you can come up and access some of these particular, this particular stuff. And especially this year of a tree of life I think is an excellent find uh, uh, also too. Um, so we, we have some of those. All this stuff is, uh, is a dollar. This Christ ritual, two pages, is two bucks, you know. But anyway, uh, we have those also, too. So uh, 
let's let's get to the, the, the libations to give give the gods their some their, their thing and we're going to deal with these underworld deities because they haven't been heard from from years for years and years uh, in these particular names because when most people uh, see it and it says the rings of hell they just think it's some fallen angels like 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 uh your boy um, Valentine gave uh, when he first came he called out these fallen angels and said go bury them in your backyard now the sister the sister Tabitha said when she was going to bury them in the backyard, she said that the spirit told her, man, you need to pour water to them motherfuckers. And she said she, was, she started libating them even though she realized what the deal was. So this is, this is our energy direct, d directly related to our melanated selves. You see what I'm saying? So in the mystery of this thing, you got what is called the low demons or the low spirits and the high spirits. The high spirits are actually low now. And the low spirits are actually high. I will take the last and make them first. You see what I'm saying? That's why the book of, that's why if you notice, the, the book of Revelations is the oldest book in the Bible. It was written long before the Bible in Kemet. Cambyses uh, raided Kemet, which is from Persia, raided Egypt, took this papyrus back when he ransacked the temples took it to Persia and then the Christians got it from Persia. So the book of Revelation is the oldest book in the Bible. So they, they took, take, took the first and made it last. So this is all, you know, um, uh, is, is, a, is a form of, uh, of that. As a matter of fact, before Sheikh Anthony Diop died in his book, um, Civilization of Barbarism, he took a chapter, a chapter somewhere at the end of the book. And if you read the chapter at the end of the book, it explained most of the book from the beginning. And that's, 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 that's called Remember the Future. Um, even your boy Stephen Hawkins deals with that. Stephen Hawkins deals with that in the brief history of time, which is also you can rent on video based, based on the cosmos also. So let's pull these uh, 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 guardians of hell. We're going to start with Azazel and Awas. Azazel, Ashe, Awas, Ashe. And it's interesting. I want to get this out before while, it, while it's hit me. That's why I have to do this. In this particular book, they got a chief god of the Egyptians. Now I'm going to show you this name right here. Look, to let you know. Basically, in this book, it, when somebody asks him, what are the demons? He said the demons are basically all the gods of the ancient world that the Hebrew, Christian, and Islamic brothers and sisters, you see what I'm saying? They wasn't a part of Hebrew, Christianity, or Islam. So all of your Camite, Sumerian, Babylonian, Mesopotamian, Greek, which was also black, you see what I'm saying? Assyrian deities, equatorial African deities, West African deities became demons. You see, basically. That's all, that's all we're talking about here. And that's interesting because in this book, The Fallen Angels by uh, Bernard J. Bamberger, look at this. I want to show you this. I, 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 uh, I think the name is here. Let's see if I can get the name right. Uh, uh, his name is um, Uza, let's see if it's here, Uza, no, Uza El, Uza and Uza El is the chief demon of the Egyptians. Now if you know linguistics and phonetics based on the ancient shit, Uza or Osa is fucking Osiris. So in here the chief demon of the Egyptians based on the Hebrew thing is Uza El. Is Osiris, the god of the perfect black. You see what I'm saying? So uh, it's, it's god of the perfect black. So this is the way they do things with, word, uh, uh, with, 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 with certain deities that don't fit in the Judeo-Christian concept when the devil and all that kind of stuff came to the forefront. And instead of being just a part of the yin and the yang, the darker mystery, the lighter mystery, it became the evil one and all this type of stuff. That we have to break those bonds if you're going to travel, if you're going to get to the other realm. You have to look at yourself and accept yourself for this powerful deity because the demons that they're talking about is you, the fallen ones. In hell, we, did we go through hell? So literally right there let you know we live in hell. Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that 60 years ago. Okay, you know the, you, you, you know the drill. Abaddon, I say Adoba, I say Adamayel, I say Agaros, I say, let me get these out of the way, Cthulhu, I say Shibnigarok, I say Dagon, I say um, Azazel, excuse me, excuse me, Azazel, Azoth, I say Hastar, I say Nilahotep, I say Shibnigarok, I say Great Ones, I say Great Old Ones, I say 
um, uh, Patani to Unra, I say, uh, Henry, I say, Thunder Dog, I say, uh, Thunderbird, I say, Sun Bear, I say. Uh, let's see. All right. Get the rest of them in a minute. Layla, I say. Lilith, I say. Alatar, I say. Amados, I say. Andreas, I say. Amados, I say. Astaros, I say. Astartes, I say. Aim, I say. Alaros, I say. Azazel, I say. Baal, I say. Baleth, I say. Balin. I say, uh, about that demon, I say, Beelzebub, I say, Baliel, I say, Balfour, I say, Bur, I say, Sham, I say, Sharon, I say, Shots, I say, uh, Cruzel, I say, Dagon, I say, Earthmedius, I say, Ferbers, I say, Gayen, I say, Hectic, I say, Jezebel, I say, Kista, I say, Koyel, I say, Leonard, I say, Leviathan, I say, Lilith, I say, Malthus, I say, Mammon, I say, uh, Mastema, I say Mel, uh, uh, Mel, 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 Mel Shom, I say, which is a part of Red Mel Kesedek. You see, same, uh, you see. Because in here, one of the demons is, one of the demons in here is also Metatron, but then, it, then again in the Hebrew mythology, Metatron is the highest demon that sits next to God. He is the face of God. But yet he's known as the devil on the physical realm. So you, you got to figure this shit out. Uh, you see. Mespis Fothis, I say. Miriam, I say. Malak, I say. Mullen, I say. Mamur, I say. Nemedus, I say. Nadil, I say. Okay. Nabius, I say. Nigas, I say. Orus, I say. Othron, I say. Phimon, I say. Uh, Phytonus, I say, uh, Presbron, I say, Pharo, I say, Rome, I say, Rim, I say, Roni, I say, Samuel, I say, Samaza, I say, Samasis, I say, uh, Shabari, I say, Selion, I say, Succotus, I say, uh, uh, Shamuz, I say, uh, Ubercus, I say, Ukfer, I say, Valfer, I say, Verdilet, I say, uh, Vern, I say, Vetus, I say, Oxpon, I say, Zabados, I say, Zom, I say. Okay. Uh, let's, let's, let's go on a little minute. Get some, just do some more water here. Uh, Ain, I say, Ain, Sir, I say, Kether, I say, Shakma, I say, Bina, I say, Tipperet, I say, Noxa, I say, Hod, I say, Yasser, I say, Malkuth, I say, um, Shekinah. Uh, I say Sophia, I say Soot, I say Soot Nubit, I say Soot Nessie, I say Soot Ha, I say Sootek, I say Soot Anush, I say Anfu, I say An um, um, Anush, I say um, Tahuti, I say Upmaret, I say Imhotepamuthis, I say Sheba, I say Seba, I say Shakti, I say Sekhmet, I say Selket, I say Sashet, I say Setet, I say um, Abraxas, I say Mithra, I say uh, Let's see, uh, what's that? Ashe. <laughs> okay, um, hold on one minute. Let's, let's get another roll going. Uh, uh, Dam Damerchi, I say, Damawala Mwato, I say, Loa, I say, Papagede, I say, Odumgwedi, I say, Elguferele, I say, Ogushengo, I say, Azuli, I say, Edoedo, I say, Laka, I say, um, um, hold on, something I'm gonna, uh, uh, Who, I say, Do, I say, Ku, I say, Harmaku, I say, Babaluaye, I say, Ipe, I say, Oshosi, I say, Olaroon, I say, Olakun, I say, Oshun, I say, Ogun, I say, Shingo, I say, Edoedo, I say, Legba, I say, Elegba, I say, Oshu, I say, Orisha Oku, I say, Oya, I say, um, uh, what's the, uh, um, Erzuli, I say, or, uh, uh, um, hold on, um, uh, I'll think of it in a minute. Let me see some more in a few minutes. Let's see, uh, Imenya, that's what I was trying to say. Ola, uh, uh, Nkulu Kulu, I say, um, Nakumpa, I say, Umbelinga, I say, uh, give me some gods, ones that know. I say, I say, I say, okay, oh, excuse me, <laughs> uh, uh, Buddha, I say. I say, Shango, I say, Layla, I say, Alat, I say, Ale, I say, Lilith, I say, 
Um, Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. But I net unra Ashe. Uh, Amun Ashe. Um, Ashe, 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 Ashe. Apit Ashe. To all gods known and unknown, Ashe. Okay, well, no more. Uh, so, Ashe. Ashe. Um, what's the god that passed on? Um, Dr. Emos. That's a god now. Ashe. Um, we're going to give one to Ella Fitzgerald because we're dedicating this lecture on the musical side to her, Ashe. Also, do Ashe. Anybody else? Some people that passed on? Ashe. Ashe. What's a, what's a good, uh, a couple of people passed on, um, um, your boy from, um, they used to blow the saxophone, um, no, uh, well, no, recently, George Howard, uh, we want to give a shout out to him, Ashe, um, Ashe, uh, Ashe, so my family, Hemet family, Shaw family, Davis family, all my family members, Ashe, call out your family members, one, two, three, Ashe, 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 Ashe. Ashe, 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 Ashe. So we're going to give a, a shout out to all the brothers and sisters that the government has killed over the last 20 years, you know, through cloning, AIDS, crack, killing them in the jail, you know, gang warfare, all of that. Ashe, that's that black cloud, Ashe, or the dark cloud. Uh, remember now, the dark cloud was also, um, the dark cloud was also mentioned uh, on Art Bell's show, when, when, the, when the white boys did the remote viewing based on that thing behind Hale Bop last year, which is three times big as the Earth, and they said, well, this thing is an intelligence. That's the dark cloud, and that's that particular energy of our people that's waiting to retake the Earth through us because that dark cloud is also in us. So to read about that dark cloud, you can get the book, Gareth Knight's book, Experience the Inner Worlds by Gareth Knight. I think they got one there. Gareth Knight, Experience of the Inner Worlds. I think that's the name of it. Gareth Knight. Huh? Yeah, it's Experience the Inner Worlds by Gareth Knight. There's a whole section on the dark cloud in there. Number one, the dark cloud is also in your head. That is melanin, clouds without water. Crawley had a book called Clouds Without Water. That's going to be mentioned several times in this particular book, Mask of the Illuminati, that I just had. Uh, Mask of the Illuminati. Uh, it's around here somewhere. Uh, it's going to be mentioned several times in here. He's going to mention it throughout the entire book. The mystery, clouds without water, is melanin, the dark cloud. But on the, as you have inner, you have, you have outer. So this outer dark cloud is this intelligence as our people that's lined up to retake the earth through us, that we're going to get into also too, uh, to understand that particular dark cloud. So we want to give that particular energy to them because when they die, they live in you. You see what I'm saying? They live, they live in you. You see, so, uh, uh, you know, it's just that religion has kept us so ignorant these days. Some old preacher talking about death, know not what the living do. What shit is that? Thank you, man. We need to just straight up talk. I swear. You want to scare the government? Just castrate all these motherfucking preachers' heads. Serious, man. Straight up. I don't, I, I'm serious. You know, motherfuckers gonna talk, you know, everything about the preacher don't say, fuck the damn preacher. If I had my way, all the motherfuckers would be dead. Because they have lied to our people. Well, I, I'm gonna change that. Some of them don't know no fucking better. But then again, that now the criteria now for most people to be preachers, Methodists or Baptists, is they gotta go to seminary. So anybody that went to theology school, they know a little more shit than it, you know. They know a lot more. Because I know that for a fact. Like, my, like one of my boys that went to theology school, but he was with Dr. Ben and all of them. So when he went, he had already gone to Kemet, and he said in the theology school, I think it's Brown the Theological um, Institute in, in, in New York, one of the big ones. He said they got big volumes of Budge's um, Book of the Dead, with the, I mean the big volume books with, Leather bound with all the papyrus and he said just tons and tons of whole Egyptian section. So the average motherfucker out here, these big time motherfuckers out here preaching, they study some goddamn shit. So to sit up here and tell a motherfucker lies up in here while people being fucked up, them niggas need to be taken the fuck out. Serious business. The 
they know, they, they know, but see what's happening is, is that, see, under the government, the 50C31 law, they can't get paid now unless they tell that fucking lie. As well as the other things, but they sold our fucking people out. And they even, even, you know this is the biggest hypocrite. You wrong saying kill them. Fuck it. They preach the Bible say that for whom much is given, much is given. Uh, for whom much is given, much is required. And then all through the book it talk about the damn hypocrite and Judas and how that motherfucker's gonna be taken out. So shit. That's the one right there, that goddamn preacher. I don't like none of them. Especially the ones that know. Now, if you are ignorant, mom, that's cool. That's different. But a nigga that know and chooses to lie, that's worse than a nigga out here selling crack. Because he knows. Most people don't. You can say, well, a lot of brothers and shit, they don't know. So they said, you know, an uh, 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 ignorant person, you see what I'm saying? He can't be chastised. But when a person knows, fuck him. You see. Mm. See? What's that? I wanted to go to something you said from the very beginning when you said the cosmos is like connected to that, whatever goes on. Yeah, right. Right. So that means whatever goes on in the cosmos goes on in us. Yeah. Like when it storms and when it rains and things of that nature. Is that the connection that you feel like elder people plus myself? It's interesting you said that because in your in the melanin, you have this. This is all melanin is. Light on the mark. Earth, huh? Light on the mark. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, earth, water, um, air, and 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 fire. The four elements. Earth, you know, earth. You know. Anyway, uh, uh, that's all this is. And that's all nature is, is a particle of those four elements. The fifth is actually the inner melanin that gives out all of this. So there's a fifth one, which is the god of the crossroads. That's the legba, which is also called the rosy cross. It depends on what system you're in. So therefore, this particular energy, you can control it. Well, I do it all the time. I, I did it last week. Last week, they said 100% rainfall. I said, oh, are you? And you know the shit. You know these niggas ain't going to come out. If it rains, you see, you, you, you got to do something about this. Boom. Sunny, crackers didn't know what the hell happened because we control that. It's just like we was late for the plane. I said, oil? Shit, we, we, we got to go to Newark to catch this plane. We got about 30 minutes. We got about 20 minutes and, we, and it's a 30 minute ride. Be late. We get there, they say, well, the plane is an hour late. Two hours late. That's because the they made sure that the weather was so fucked up in between New York, Atlanta, and New York, the plane coming to get us, they, you know, they had to go off the course. So my point is, is yeah, you can do that, and you can feel that. I got to bear witness to that. The reason why I said it is because every time, like, especially if a mother of a child, uh -huh. a child dies, or somebody that's close and the family dies, this is our train in the neighborhood. Uh, that? When you do certain things, how you bring on, you know. Yeah, that's, that's just accessing accessing the four elements of nature which is a part of of the of the you access the four elements which is part of the melanin and the fifth element is your own thoughts you see what I'm saying which is you so the fifth element that they showed the white girl that wasn't nothing but just black people you see in the in the movie also dealing with this uh this X-Files movie um let's see if I get the right thing uh well I get to get down the way uh get I, when I get down uh, about a page later, I'll get into that. But I wanted to, un wanted to show you something based on, I'll show you a complete example of a clone. All you got to do is go get the movie When We Were King. See, by us having a, only a three-year attention span, we can't, um, we can't look at things and find out, um, we can't look at things and analyze things for the simple fact that we've forgotten what the people were if we don't keep a record of it. And that's just about everybody. But if you go get the movie When We Were Kings, and you're focusing on George Foreman now. Now the brother that's on the movie When We Were Kings, and the nigga now for Meineke, and all his hamburger shit, and grinning and stuff, is two different people. Now, first of all, this is not like a person that was, he was 10, and then you see him as an adult. He might have changed, but ain't no nigga gonna change from a brother like that in his 70s, in his what, 20s, uh, mid-twenties, late-twenties, or whatever, mid-twenties, and then by the nineties, this is a total different person. This person act like he was born in Disneyland. 
You see? But yet you see the person on when we were kings, this is a total different person. I don't give a damn how much you change. See, first of all, you don't have to change your mannerism to change, or you don't have to change your behavior, not necessarily to change your attitudes or to change your thoughts. You would still have a certain unique thing about you that people recognize no matter what kind of knowledge you got. You understand what I'm saying? We're talking about a person that's totally different. We're talking about a person that hardly did, he didn't talk almost at all when he was in the 70s. Now this nigga can't keep his mouth shut. You see what I'm saying? That's a classic example of one that they cloned and this, they cloned and not only that, they did behavioral modification with that particular person. Now, we did it with the hard copy right now. Let's get through all of this. Like I said last night, there's hardly been no teen murders at all in the last year here, other than people killing their own parents or whatever. And you know, most of that, you could, there's a lot of shit going with white people. Out in South Georgia, Smyrna, and all, all kind of shit like that. But as far as black people in the inner city, you haven't had a lot of stuff going on because they basically isolated the crack. See, the crack game now, it's different than the crack game in the 90s. Now you just got stragglers out there trying to get a little rock, a little leftover piece. But as far as the, the epidemic, they, they isolated that and they got rid of all of that. My point is, um, uh, uh, my point is you'll see no murders in Atlanta, a major metropolitan city. But in my hometown, Mullen, South Carolina, that ain't even on the fucking map, they done had 27 deaths since January in a place that might not have 27 deaths of young people in 50 years. You see what I'm saying? And you know that, and it was interesting because I had a black woman on TV and she was talking about how the stuff went on in the early 90s is now moved to the smaller towns. I'm saying, well, if the shit moved to the smaller town, hell, it would still be going on in the bigger damn towns. You see what I'm saying? So that lets you know that the government has moved in, but they see this place here. I, for some reason, it was the, the crack was real bad in the early 90s. Uh, simultaneously, uh, in my small town in Mullins, there's a place called Conway, which was population 6,000, and in 1988 they built a 10 million dollar jail. How you gonna build a 10 million dollar jail for population 6,000? So you, this thing was an estimation that was set up in a doggone drawing board. You see what I'm saying? They let you know that they were going to filter it down based on, well, we got the big city now, now let's go to the smaller city. You see what I'm saying? And all over, everywhere, what's that? A new market. And so now the things that happened in the early, late 80s, early 90s is now in all small towns across America. You see what I'm saying? So we know that this is being witness to this particular stuff is, is uh, uh, messed up. Now, let me show you something. All you got to do is just do research. Listen, in the, in, the, in, the, in the early 80s, they phased black people out of Hollywood. Then Spike Lee and all them came about and they started giving black people a little bit of roles. And then by the 1990s, you started getting these little, these black movies. And then you had a few good movies that came up out of that. And then all of a sudden it's down here, you start getting a whole lot of bullshit. Now I'm going to show you something. In the rap game, there's very innovative brothers. Like I was up in New York and the shit they was playing up there was almost groundbreaking compared to the stuff they're playing down here. A lot of innovative underground rap, even in the rap game, there's some good shit out here that's awesome. But it's interesting that nationwide, the person who gets out is the Master P. The epitome of ignorance. Now, Bear witness what I told you the last time about my boy who went over to, to England and everybody over there thought everybody that lived in America that was black is a rapper. Although we know better, they don't see us in our $40,000 jobs and our Mercedes and all this kind of stuff. They see us as only what the image that the world gives them and basically it's the rapper. Now it's interesting. I told you about this in about two or three other lectures. Now you got to study things all the way down. You, when you study things, Everything is everything. Maulana Karinga told you that shit. Everything is everything. So that's the ignorant man or the, or the, or the, or the nigga that ain't incontinent is going, oh man, you reaching for shit now. 
Oh man, that ain't got nothing to do with that. No, everything is everything when you're living in a conspiratorial culture. Now, Merrimax Films, let me show you the science on this shit. Merrimax Films got most of their particular money by doing the arts, artsy types of films somewhere between the mid 90s or the early 90s up until 1996 until when the Academy Awards turned around and say, okay, that's it, Hollywood. We tired of blowing up shit. We tired of Bruce Willis. And that's why, if you notice, the majority of the films the last two years have been artsy type films. That's the shit now. That's all because of Merrimax Films. They came and opened up the market and started producing all types of movies, The Madness of King George. Different, all kinds of movies that Merrimax Films started producing that white people started demanding and say, we want some shit that's got a little more thought to it. Whereas if you miss the dialogue, you miss the shit. Got to pay attention to the dark dialogue. You see, niggas still in the house, they're looking for some fucking actor, you want to be entertained. You got to listen to the dialogue and you can hear the shit. So, Merrimax Films is the people that brought that about. But how is it that Merrimax Films it brought that about would produce some shit with Master P, the epitome of ignorance that need to be killed. Him and that other motherfucker that's up there just jumping all around. And I, excuse me to people that don't understand, I realize why I, I curse like this now. <laughs> and I couldn't understand it because when I first started out, I was very, you know, very mild-mannered or whatever type thing. But as I got on, I started, and I realized that because the Spirit came and told me, we, t we, 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 we did that, or your energy did that and shit, so the crackers won't put my shit on TV. So that's where you get killed at, going on the goddamn TV set. <laughs> so you fill it up with this, they say, well, fuck it, we, you know, it just be a long beep, beep, beep word. <laughs> so that's the reason why. You see, but anyway... How could Merrimax in the early 90s up in this be the epitome? Even your, I think the movie English Patient was by Merrimax, and that won the Academy Award. And then you're going to flip and do some shit called, I got the hookup. You don't realize Merrimax is a foreign film company in connection with a, with a domestic film company. The, that shit automatically gets released in England and Europe the same time it gets released here by it being a foreign film company. So they're looking at this fucking idiot around the fucking way in fucking Sweden. You don't understand the game because, not you, because we all, the only thing we're interested in is what the fuck we like. You know, I can get into Master P, I can get into it, yes, I can get into the shit. I like to buy it, buy it, when it first came out. But that's not the point what we're talking about here, we're talking about adulthood. You know what that shit is? Adulthood is,